All right, now we're going. So let me go ahead and share uh, an agenda slide with you. And then we're gonna have a few minutes of review. Um, move this over here, so I'm gonna cover that. Um, as we're, whoops, as we're going through this review, if you're on Zoom, uh, you don't need to worry about um, whether you're raising your hand, like just unmute, speak out. And same for you guys here. There's only four of you. I mean, if you want to raise your hand just because you're so used to doing it, that's fine. But you can just like speak out. You don't have to be real formal. I'd like it just to be sort of an interactive conversation. And that's more my style generally anyway. Um, but especially today when we're kind of getting used to it. So um, I'd like to have some feedback from all of you once we get to that part. But a couple of reminders first. We've got two elevator ride activities. You guys will be doing the simulation here with the weights and the scales like we talked about before. And when you're done, just leave them at your tables. And then when I clean off the tables, I'll clean off the equipment as well. Um, and uh, for the rest of you, uh, some of you did that when you were here a couple days ago. Others of you are doing that feelings in an elevator assignment with a rubber band and just attaching something to it. And just a quick reminder about that. You're really just looking to see, does the rubber band stretch or when does the rubber band stretch? And when does the rubber band relax? And when does the rubber band kind of just stay constant? And so that's what you're looking for. Now the feelings in an elevator is actually going to be a lab grade. And it is more of a completion kind of a concept for me when I'm grading it because you're making some predictions, especially if you're doing the rubber band version, it's really kind of hard to see what's happening. It's a little bit easier to do the scales, but even that's tricky. Um, so it's, it's more of a challenging you to think it through, see if you can visualize some things here um, and more of a completion concept there. For the elevator video analysis, that's gonna be in the homework category. And that one is gonna be a little bit more, some of it's more completion based, but some of it with the calculations and the free body diagrams will be more, okay, are you getting a reasonable values and are you drawing the free body diagrams correctly? So we're gonna review just a little bit. Uh, you guys have print copies, although I, I realize after I made them, you probably already have printed most of them, but you've got extra copies now if you'd like. Um, and cause I still have more than I need. <laughs> um, and if not, you can just, you know, make paper airplanes or start your next campfire. Um, for all the assignments, when you turn them in, you can put them in on Axis. That'll just keep it more consistent. And so whether you're here when they're due or you're not here, just everything will be on Axis. And we'll just keep the same 11.59 PM Pacific as the deadline time for that. And for you guys being on A-Day, these two activities are due on Axis by a little before midnight on Monday. So when we have our, see Monday's Cardinal, right? Yeah, so Cardinal Monday, um, if you have questions, whether you're on Zoom or in person that day, you can ask questions about these since they're not due till that night. Okay. Anything about the assignments before we just do a real snappy review? So both of the assignments aren't due until Monday? Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next page then. And I just want to have a little bit of a conversation here to review. And again, just speak up, unmute if you're on Zoom, just speak out if you're in the class, um, kind of taking turns, giving feedback and answers. But I want to hear some information from you. What do we mean when we talk about a force? What is a force? What is that referring to in physics? Well, a force is basically the, for the units of it, it's just kilograms uh, times meters per second squared. So. Okay, good. So the units are kilograms times meters per second squared. That's something we know. Something that acts on an object that changes um, the velocity or the acceleration. Good. Yeah, so it's something that acts on an object and creates an acceleration It changes the velocity. Excellent. Anything else you can think of how we would describe forces? has to act between two objects, I think. Yeah, good. So forces can only exist if there's two objects because there has to be a push and a pull from one object on the other object. So you have to have two objects for forces to exist. Good, I think we've pretty much covered most of what, anybody else have something else you want to add to it? I, I think we've pretty much got it covered though. 
All right, good. So what's a Newton? Unit. It's a unit. And what is it a unit for? Force. 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 And we heard uh, Jackson said a little bit ago that if we broke it down, it would be kilograms times meters per second squared. So keep that in mind when you're calculating on these exercises, these elevator exercises, Newton is kilogram meter per second squared. So for instance, in the feelings experiment, these are 50 gram weights. So you got to make sure you convert that to kilograms so that your units work. Uh, and then another thing that, so that's what a Newton is in terms of units. And then just a very quick review of Newton's laws. Uh, what's the first law? The law of inertia. The law of inertia. So objects will either stay at rest or stay in motion in constant motion. Um, unless there's an unbalanced force that changes that motion or creates motion. What's Newton's second law? F equals MA. F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. Good. So, uh, and that's what we were saying, what Haley was saying earlier, that a force is something that causes an acceleration to an object which would have mass. So it's just a mathematical relationship of how forces create that change in velocity. And then how about Newton's third law? Um, it's like the equal and opposite uh, force when something acts on something else. Yeah, good. So kind of like Jilly was saying, there has to be two objects. And so there's going to be an equal opposite relationship. Another way to say that is forces come in pairs. So because there has to be two objects, there's going to be one force going from object A to B and one going from B to A. So it's always going to have a pair of forces. And that's a quick review of Newton's laws. So what do we mean when you when you see on a free body diagram or on a on a uh, picture? What is FG? Force from gravity. The force due to gravity. And what's a synonym we could use to like a one word synonym for that? Weight. Weight. Good. And how do we calculate it? Mass, Mass times, times gravity. Mass times gravity, good. And when we say gravity, what what's what's that gravity part? 9.81. Good, <laughs> we got a choir going, that's great. Uh, so 9.81 or 10 meters per second squared, it's that acceleration due to gravity, excellent. So it truly is just mass times acceleration. It just happens to be the acceleration caused by the gravitational force field of the earth. All right, and then last as a quick review here. Oh, uh, the main reason I wanted to ask about that FG is to remind you it's mg, right, mass times g. And again, the mass has to be in kilograms. That's why we reviewed units. So as you're doing these exercises, keep those things in mind so you can kind of double check your calculations. So then last, what is a free body diagram? The force that, like, it's the diagram of the force that act on an object. Good. So um, it's a diagram of how the forces are acting on an object. So what are some key things we have to keep in mind when we're making them? Like angle, like if it's flat, like a frame. Mm -hmm. Good, so we have to figure out how are we gonna make our axes? Are we gonna make those straight or angled? And then drawing the forces correctly to represent whether they're straight or angled, good. What other things we need to think about when we draw free body diagrams? If there's actually like motion happening. Sorry? If there's actually like motion happening. Because like if, if, if well, because I mean, it, it'll be in the units that you write, mm -hmm. but uh, like each force has to be like labeled. Okay. So you're going to have to describe what each force is, giving it a label. Good. Were you going to say something? I just said if it's balanced. Okay. Balanced. Yeah. So you're going to be looking to see are the vertical forces balanced or the horizontal forces balanced? If it is an angle, maybe thinking about the components to break it into vertical and horizontal. Um, what about the arrows in a free body diagram? What do we have to do with those arrows? Someone on Zoom. With the arrows, you can represent like if one force is greater than the other, like the, the direction of the force as well. Good, yeah. So the direction they point tells us the direction of the force and the length of the arrow tells us the magnitude of the force. And where do those arrows have to originate? From the object. From the object. And so in the diagram, how's the object represented? As a dot. As a dot. As a dot. Good. Um, and we talked about forces coming in pairs and that a force can't exist unless you have two objects. But remember, when we look at a free body diagram, 
we're focusing on just one object at that point. We're saying, hey, we're just looking at this object, all the forces from this one object, even though there would be other objects creating. The so keep that in mind as well. Now, to the elevator scenario, a uh, little couple hints for you as you think through that video analysis in particular. I've got a, you can see my artistic skill here uh, with my stick man in the elevator. Sometimes the elevator is going to be rising, sometimes the elevator is going to be descending. But what we're thinking about with those free body diagrams is we're focusing on the person. Okay, so the person is the dot. And then the downward vector would be what? Gravity. Gravitational force or the weight, right? Will the weight of the person change in the elevator? No. 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 Because the weight is just m times g, right? And their mass isn't going to change, and gravity's not going to change. So the weight of the person actually isn't going to change. So in all your free body diagrams, the weight should be the same, right? What's the, when we say the, uh, it looks like they're heavier, it looks like they're lighter, and we see the bathroom scale actually changing, that's not really the weight, that's the person's apparent weight because of the motion, right? What actually, what force is the apparent weight actually? Normal. The normal force, right? So in your diagrams, the weight of the person won't be changing, just the normal force, right? Sometimes the normal force will be equal, sometimes it'll be greater, sometimes it'll be less. So just a quick review of thinking that through, thinking through how you would draw the free body diagrams and that the weight actually isn't changing for the person. All right, any questions from you guys live or live on Zoom? Um, <laughs> anybody have questions about the exercises or anything we've reviewed today? All right. So for you guys in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you started. I'll give you a couple pointers and, and show you a few things around the room. Uh, for you guys on Zoom, at this point, you're just gonna have time to work and both exercises are due next Monday night. So uh, depending on what parts you need to finish, you can use the time to do that. If you'd like to stay on Zoom, you can. Um, you can eavesdrop in on what's going on here in the classroom or ask questions. Uh, but if you don't feel um, compelled to do that, you're welcome to be dismissed for the day and just use the time to work on those activities. So if you're leaving for, for, from Zoom, then I hope you have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, and if you have questions, just stick around and once I get them going, I'll be available to answer any questions you have. So if you're taking off, have a great weekend. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rob, I have a question. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I'll be able to come to school on Monday or like do or on Zoom either. So um, is there anything like very significant that I will be missing? Um, we're going to be starting some conversations on Atwood's machines and also Hooke's Law. Okay. I'll review, but um, I will be recording so you can check on the YouTube channel and see what what happens in class. Okay, so then I just like walk. Can I just watch that recording and after I have questions, we can schedule a Zoom meeting or something? Sure, that'll work. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Mr. Webb, I had a question. Huh? Um, I was trying to download Logger Pro because I just want to have like the video.